everybody ready? Kern County Fire Department's Office of Emergency Services, Georgiana Armstrong. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I was invited to discuss the telephone, uh, the county's emergency notification system, which we call Ready Kern. In a disaster event, a critical capability for local government is the ability to reach out to our constituents and issue warnings and alerts. And there are multiple ways of doing this. The gold standard, of course, is for a first responder to go door to door with face to face communications. And that's very effective when we have a small event that isn't expanding rapidly and we have enough first responders available. When we have larger events or when our first responders are tasked with actually the response rather than going door to door, we have to default to technology. There is a system called the EAS or Emergency Alert System which is a federal system which has been in existence actually since the Cold War. And that's the system we all hear on the television and the radio. It starts with a very annoying screeching sound to get your attention. And then there's a verbal warning. And on the television, there is a hard-coded uh, text at the bottom. The EAS system um, has some limitations in that if there is a warning issued for the county of Kern, even if it's for only a small portion, it goes to the entire county. It, you can't really focus it on a smaller geography. What the county now has, which is Ready Kern, which is a telephone emergency notification system. So it doesn't go out on the television or the radio. It actually goes to individuals on their cell phone or a text message or an email. Uh, we've had this system for about two years. Uh, no, the first two years were funded by a state grant, and after that, the Board of Supervisors has continued the cost. This is an opt-in system, meaning that no one is automatically in the system to receive alerts, and registration is a very simple process. It's free. There is no cost to constituents to be part of Ready Kern. The registration is simple in that we need a name, we need an address, and then we need the contact information that the constituent wants the system to use. The reason for that we need an address is because when we're sending alerts, we only want to send it to the people who live in the geography that's at threat. That is, if you're living in Taft, you really don't want to receive a notice for something that's going on in Ridgecrest. So we need a name, an address, and contact information. Residents can register up to t four telephone numbers and two email addresses. And they're also able to register for multiple locations. That is, they can register their home address, they could register their business address, they could register for their child's school, a parent's address, any multiple number. There's no limit on anything like that. And the registration can be done online at www.readykern.com or through the county's website or the Kern County Fire Department's website. And for people who are not overly comfortable going online, we are closely partnered with Community Action Partnership at 211, and they can do registrations via telephone. When we set up Ready Kern and we started presenting it to the public, we did include some promises. And the promises are that we use it only for public safety information. If uh, constituents are getting a call from Ready Kern, we are not promoting an event, we are not saying take out the trash, get out and vote. It is strictly for public safety use. We don't sell the information to third parties. It is held confidential in the system. And one of the questions that came up, is this a trick? Are you trying to find people who have unpaid parking tickets? It's not a trick. The reason we need the address is so that when we identify an area for, to be notified, we know who should be included. The Ready Kern system is a very fast operating system. That's how it's designed to be due to the nature of the response. Technically, the Ready Kern system could call everyone in the county of Kern in a matter of just a few moments. The limiting technical factor are the telephone trunk lines coming into the county, but we've never had a problem with that. And when it does reach a constituent, it also moves very quickly. 
So if you've registered multiple phone numbers, while you're answering your landline phone, your cell phone is going to be going off, your text is going to be going off, and you're going to be getting an email. What we ask people to do when they receive a message is to press 1 to confirm that they've received it, and that serves two purposes. It lets us know at the EOC that this person has received the message, and it also tells the system not to call them again. When people just listen to the message and hang up, the system says they didn't get the message, and a few minutes later, it's going to call all of their numbers again. We activate the Ready Current system at the direction of emergency responders in the field. So if an incident commander is out working an incident and identifies a threat to the community, they will make the call to tell us this is the warning, this is the area, and this is the action we want folks to take. So we can move very quickly, but we do go through a verification process because accuracy in the message is very important to us. We, re we have templates for most messages, so we fill in the details, and that way we're able to launch the Ready Kern system in very short order. When we use a Ready Kern, we also include in our message if people would like to speak to someone to, uh, to call 211, as we have also provided them with that information so that our, our residents who receive the call can speak to a person. And we also usually ask the National Weather Service to support our warning and operation by issuing an alert through the EAS system, the television and the radio. We do recommend that people register on a day with clear blue skies and not wait till there's smoke in the air or the ground is shaken. We tend to get a lot of bumps in registration during an event, and we don't recommend that. It is a quick and easy process. It is free. So we feel that this is a very valuable and essential tool that the county offers, but it's not limited to just residents in the county boundary. We, as long as we are within Kern County geography, we are happy to use this system to support any kind of activation that a city may have as well. So um, that's essentially Ready Kern and what it does. There are some brochures. We have them in English and in Spanish. We appreciate any assistance you can give us getting the word out to our, to our public um, because we feel that this is something that is really valuable for them to register for before an event. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Is this similar to the, the, the same kind of emergency system that happened in Hawaii where that emergency went out and, and uh, and then is there a way when it, after the emergency is over, is there a way to alert the peop, you know, the constituents, the people that, that there's no longer an emergency? Or, or how long are you still panicking because something's happening? Um, the system that Hawaii used was also the same t type of telephone notification system that was done at a state level. This is done at a county. And when we give a notification out, say, to a, a group of constituents that there is a fire coming and they should evacuate, we will continue to update that same geography as the situation changes. So if there's an end to the, when, when the situation ends, we will also send out a ready current saying the incident has determined that this evacuation is no longer in effect, you're welcome to go back home. So it's not like we send out one message and it's done. We always try and close the loop when it's over or send out additional messages as the situation changes if that's needed. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, Georgiana, how is this different than like uh, Amber Alerts I get on my f phone? The Amber Alerts you don't register for. The Amber Alerts come out from the state, and they're from a system where if you have a cell phone, it's going to come to your cell phone, okay? You didn't ever sign up to say, give me an Amber Alert. So that is a, a separate system that basically goes from the nearest cell tower. If you have a cell phone and you're by a cell tower that's in that alert warning, you're going to get the call. This is not that type of system. This is an opt-in system. So I, I was in the Midwest uh, last summer, and there was tor tornado warnings, and I 
received them on, on my phone just I assume because I was in the area so it seems like there's an overlap here why would you need two different systems if there's already technology that can ring every cell phone that's in the area well those other cell phone those other amber alert messages and things like that they're very brief they're, they, they're limited to a very small number of text most of the time they're very quick in a ready current system we are giving out information on a situation and asking people to take a specific response and the people who have done research on public messaging in order to convince people to do something you have to give them enough information so they recognize that this is appropriate it's accurate and it's it's not just randomly coming to them um, so our system gives us the ability to record up to a two-minute message if we needed to Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's bring this uh, meeting to order, please. Stand for the flag salute. Roll call. Ortiz. Here. B. Smith. Wood. Vallejo. Here. Mock. Cantu. Present. Mauer. Here. Prout. Here. Cryer. Here. P. Smith. Here. Wegman. Here. Couch. Here. Scribner. Here. Miller. Here. Paras. Here. Kiernan. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting, please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Good evening. My name is Dixie Walters. I'm a sergeant with the Kern County Sheriff's Office, and as I always say, my address is Lairdo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm just here with some good updates. We are in our fourth contract with Kern Cog, and we're in the third quarter of fiscal year 17-18. We have used about fi over 5,000 um, man hours cleaning up the, the roadways of Kern County, um, covering about 144 miles. Our target areas lately have been, we've spent a lot of time in Delano, but we've also hit Shafter, McFarland, Lamont, and Wasco, and Bakersfield. And um, that is about it. it. All is well. We have no issues. Do you have any questions? Any questions from the board? Dixie, I want to thank you for your service as a police officer. We do appreciate that. Thank you, and I appreciate you all as well. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good night. Any other public comments? Seeing none, moving right along. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before the action is taken. We have items A through K. Second. Roll call vote. Ortiz? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Cantu? Yes. Mauer? Yes. Prout? Yes. Cryer? Yes. P. Smith? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Miller? Yes. Hara? Yes. Kiernan? Yes. Thank you. 
Item number 5, 2017, Federal Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment 14. Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. The amendment includes revisions to the Regional Surface Transportation Program, Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program, and the Transit Program. The public review period began on March the 2nd and ends March 16th. One email was received to correct the McFarland RSTP project limits and local funding amount and will become part of the summary of comments for this amendment. The KernCog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on March 19th. State and federal approval is required. And at this time, I ask that the chair please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Open the public hearing. Do we have any comments from the public, from the board? I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Do we have a motion or do we need a motion? No, all right. Caltrans report. And I want to uh, welcome Mr. Brent Green here today, everybody. Well, I have to start by saying this is one of the most efficiently run boards I've uh, ever attended. I think we're 10 minutes in and we're already <laughs> way down the agenda. So I, I guess I do appreciate that, but it doesn't give me much time to catch my breath here. Um, anyway, um, thank you for the, yeah, thank you for the introduction. My name is Brent Green. I'm the district director for Caltrans in in District 9, um, located out of Bishop. Um, it's the first time I think I've spoken at this board, so I, I do appreciate uh, coming. I, ho I hope to be back again. I'm not going to go project by project. I'd like to just make a few comments to get things started. Um, Eastern Kern County is, is within District 9, and of course, uh, I guess Western Kern County is, is District 6. We're all one Caltrans. We work very closely together. We used to be married together. Uh, for many, many years, and so we have a lot of, uh, you know, common interests, common uh, skill sets, common um, projects that we worked on together. Uh, just, just to give a thumbnail sketch of what uh, District 9 does, if you will, in Eastern Kern, just in terms of the scope of the types of projects that we have, uh, you, can, you probably visualize this. For um, State Route uh, 58, we've got approximately 66 miles of State Route 58 uh, the boundary is sort of near Bealville all the way out toward Boron. We don't go all the way to Kramer, but pretty close to Kramer. Um, highway 14, we've got about 65 miles of Highway 14 within Eastern Kern County, and that goes from the LA County line all the way up to where um, 14 connects in with Inyo County. About 48 miles of 178, and so within our district boundaries now is 178 just east of Lake Isabella all the way out through Ridgecrest to the border of San Bernardino County. Um, on 395, uh, from the San Bernardino County line all the way up until it merges with 14 and again up to the Inyo County line. And then uh, Route 202, um, there's about 10 miles of, of Route 202 within the district boundary. So that kind of gives you a thumbnail sketch of kind of what, where we're engaged. Um, of course, uh, in terms of projects, we, we did hand out a, a report that I'm not going to go over, but, but essentially these are the, the key projects that we're currently active on um, in um, Kern County. And I, I can answer questions to these. Essentially, they're, they're somewhat arrayed by where in the project development process they are. So the, the first projects are going to be kind of in the early stages all the way through design. In terms of what we consider the major projects uh, in District 9, the, the, our largest project currently under construction in District 9 is the Freeman Gulch 1 project on 14. And you've probably heard before, I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder, but I mean, this, this project has, has been a huge project. It's been on the books for a long, long time. Um, there was a small window, even though the, sh the STIP shut down, essentially, for construction a few years ago. There was some money that kind of came back in, and we were ex uh, able to compete for that fund source, even though there wasn't much, we were able to compete for that um, as, a, as a group to get that project funded. So that was even before SB1 came on board, that was able to happen. The um, ribbon cutting for that is anticipated in April, probably May timeframe. So of course, we're excited to, to uh, both District 6 and District 9 are excited to, to have all our partners present for that, for that ribbon cutting. So that's an exciting thing. In terms of, um, our major projects, certainly we recognize that Eastern Kern County, the population of Eastern Kern County is greater than the population of Mono and Inyo combined. 
And so the investment that District 9 is starting to put into Eastern Kern County is pretty substantial. It's about uh, double what we have in Mono and Annual combined in terms of future projects you know, in the shop. Our, th our three biggest projects kind of district-wide, you know, the, the major projects that you would see are um, Freeman Gulch 2. We're just starting design on that. So, of course, that's a, a, a large project. Uh, the second, one of the second um, largest projects of the top three is the Boron. Um, we're, tr we're converting 58 from an expressway to a free full freeway standards and about 11 mile gap, if you will, um, um, near, near the Air Force Base all the way out, I think a, near Boron. Um, so that's a, that's a huge project for us. Uh, the next, kind of the third biggest project for us is the continuation of the, the MOU projects on 395. And I think the vision for uh, the Eastern Sierra for a long time is to bring 14, 395, that corridor up to full, uh, you know, four lanes. And it's gone on since, I don't know, 50s or something. I mean, it's been a long, long time. And so if you look at all the segments, there's been many, many segments. We've only got one remaining in uh, Inyo County, and that's the Olancha Cartago project. And we, we anticipate that the STIP will be adopted, and that project will be fully funded through construction. The other two remaining gaps are both in uh, Eastern Kern County, and that's what we're calling Freeman Gulch 2 and 3, which you may be familiar with. But that'll, that'll essentially complete that whole, that whole vision and corridor for, for that area. Um, some of the largest projects, I, I talked about the three largest projects. The, the largest shop project uh, in the district is also in Eastern Kern County, and that's the Rosamond um, Rehab Project. Uh, with SB1 comes some opportunities that we didn't have before, which is to do more robust construction and uh, strategies on projects that we might have done. Band-Aids, we're now able to do more. So we're employing that in select areas. We, we're hopeful, as I'm sure most people are in the transportation community, that SB1 will survive any um, recall effort. One of the things that we're trying to do, and I know that the, the local governments are doing, and elsewhere in Caltrans, is that uh, we're trying to promote the benefits from the funding that, that were graciously given through SB1. And it is a challenge because this body knows that um, to deliver projects can sometimes take many years. I mean, just to identify the environmental uh, funding, you know, all the, through that, that process takes a long time. So for us to show uh, the public immediate benefits to SB1 on projects that we know are multi-year projects is difficult. So you will see most of the early funding it's certainly in Eastern Kern and on the eastern side of the Sierra in projects that we can deliver much quicker, so you'll see pavement projects. But that doesn't mean that some of the larger projects that we might have done just, you know, cap ems or, or something, a strategy that might uh, preserve the pavement for a shorter period of time. We are trying to do more robust strategies. So hopefully that, that will continue um, in, uh, in Eastern Kern County as well. We had the opportunity uh, earlier this afternoon to delve into more um, specific uh, discussions about projects. Uh, again, in Eastern Kern County, there's a number of them. Uh, the projects that you see here are some of the projects that, that we talked about. Um, at the back of this, there's also a, a couple of sheets that show maps of local projects. So um, anyway, I'm just, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I was very encouraged. I think it's very professional. Aaron do, does, does a fantastic job. And we've w worked well with his team and, and quite frankly, the, the communities in the Eastern Sierra as well. So I see nothing good in our, in our future. It's certainly been a shot in the arm, morale-wise and energy-wise for us, not only SB1, but just having the opportunity to work in Eastern Kern County because that's, that's something where we've always had a presence, but to have a uh, more active presence in the project delivery process has been you know, very exciting for us. So. Um, with that, I'm going to end unless there's any specific questions about what I went over. And certainly, if you want to talk more specifics after the meeting, uh, me and, and several of my staff are here tonight to, to answer your questions. So thank you. Any questions for Mr. Green? Just a big thank you. You're welcome. From the attached folks, and I'm sure I speak for Ridgecrest and Cassidy. <laughs> but uh, it, it is noticed and it's appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. I just want to make a comment uh, about uh, Indeleno, uh, and it may have been done by my predecessor um, since today's my first day here. 
but um, we have that roundabout on, uh, we call it Garces Highway, but I believe the formal name is different, but there was uh, the run roundabout that was done there in Delano, and uh, a lot of people spoke against it. It, it was a it was kind of hard answering, you know, people, uh, residents about, yeah, it's going to be better. And they're really getting to like it now, and it looks gorgeous out on that. That uh, It would actually be Browning Road and uh, Garces, and it's great. Anybody who goes down that way, you have to take a look at it. looks nice and works great to slow the traffic down it because does. there were accidents there. So And, and, and Gail, you. my uh, partner from uh, Fresno out of District 6, she... She's more familiar with that than me, yeah. but thank you. Well, thank you then. <laughs> well, I, just to piggyback on what, what you said, we have found it very difficult in the valley to have roundabout accepted, but just like what you're attesting to, once it goes in, they really mm -hmm. like it, and I find them to be an opportunity to do a really nice... Oh. Um, I find it an opportunity in some areas in some cities to actually use it as almost a gateway or a beautification uh, we did a wonderful um, actually Native American interpretation um, on Reservation Road it happened to be in uh, Tulare County mm -hmm. and we had a lot of opposition we worked very closely with the tribes there and it and actually just nominated it for an award and it got an award for Tulare County but um, statewide so but it's tough it's a tough sell it was. so i'm going to take you on the road with me because <laughs> you're a, you're a great marketing tool <laughs> well but i have thank you i have to tell you because we you know the hispanic uh, uh, is a majority in yes. delano so for me to speak spanish made it easier because i could explain to them more yes. and, and invited them to come out try it you know and i think it's like anything else hands on hands on of course yeah. cars on but yeah. uh it it turned out great and it made that area really nice looking it does. the way it was done it's a beautification I, it is I, yeah it once is. you so once you get used to it and it is tough it's for people um so it, you know we're not like back east where they're <laughs> used to them we're you know we're we're the valley folk so no thank you appreciate that and I'll, I'll make sure that they know that back at my okay. district yes. office too. give them our thanks thank you thanks and then I'll start with my report and um, also just to kind of echo what Brent said about Alancho Cartago and Freeman. I've been with Caltrans almost 20 years. <laughs> I worked on the Mojave Bypass. That was one of my first projects and uh, doing that. And so I'm so excited to hear that things are moving forward. So yeah, n nice job. Um, so my first project is going to be on uh, the Formosa uh, State Route 4699 bridge uh, replacement. Uh, the project will be transitioning into the phase in which the bridge uh, construction will start. There is also a lot of earthwork activity where the contractor is bringing in material to build the bridge uh, embankments. There are also um, the contractors working on a lot of the drainage work. The next five projects are all going to be new and starting soon so I will look <coughs> forward to once they hit construction start getting you updates on those so we have the state route 99 Taft highway to our rehabilitation it's near the city of Bakersfield from north of Herring Road over crossing to Pacheco Road under crossing it's a shop project for Caltrans start date is April 2nd and the next one is we've got um, that's been around for a long time for District 6 is State Route 46. Um, that's segment 4A. That's to widen uh, State Route 46 from two to four lanes between Lost Hills Road and I-5. And the contract was approved February 2nd and a start date in April. Cottonwood uh, East Rehab um, on State Route 58 in Bakersfield from Cottonwood Road under crossing to just east of the 58 and 184 separation. Shop project for Caltrans. Start date is actually in a couple weeks, March 29th. The Kern uh, Rumble Strips um, on State Route 65 uh, from Severn Standard Road to north of Avenue 196. And uh, they approved the contract March 5th. Start date is April. And uh, Kern 33 and 119 Rumble Strips 
Um, these are going to be center line rumble strips. Um, and it'll be a, um, various locations on 33 and 119. Shop project, uh, they are also starting next week. So we have some, uh, a lot of activity coming up in the next month or so, so I'll be excited to talk about that. And hopefully with SB1, that I won't have a one page report, I have multiple. Hopefully you guys won't get bored. I'll make it, I try and make it exciting. If you can make building roads exciting, I usually am pretty good about that. You guys use, I can get a laugh now and then. So thank you very much, unless there's questions. Any questions for Gail? Thank you, Gail. executive director's report good evening madam chair and board members I have a, a handful of items uh, first one is uh, you may have heard this but I will officially announce it that director of Caltrans Malcolm Doherty resigned about two weeks ago and he has been replaced with uh, Lori Berman she comes from the San Diego area I've known her for about um, 10 or 12 years and I met with her last last week as as well as previously um, I'm sure she will she will do a great job um, she is not as familiar with uh, the obviously the valley as Malcolm was since Va Malcolm came from district 6 uh, I look forward to working with her last week Tiger grants from the federal government were announced uh, if any of your cities applied for any um, the next round of awards will be the infra grants which are scheduled to be released sometime early summer or, l or late spring. May 1st, as, as some of you may remember, federal funds go through what's called the um, OA pull. That's where we, your cities and the county can capture funds from other areas in the state that are not delivering. So please uh, urge your staff if they have the capacity to deliver projects um, quickly to capture uh, funds from other areas. Uh, some of you may have read about the high-speed rail um, business plan that was released la last week. Um, to really boil it down, it's going to be delivered uh, at least four years later for about 25 percent more than was anticipated two years ago. Uh, overall, b bad news. March 19th through the 21st is a Caltrans Good Movement Seminar in Ontario. We will have staff there. March 21st and 22nd, next um, Wednesday and Thursday, I believe Br Brent mentioned this, there's a CTC meeting in Orange County. I will be attending uh, and the STIP will be adopted at that meeting and the SHOP will be adopted at that meeting. So it's a sig significant meeting for KernCog. March 22nd and 23rd, also next week, California Air Resources Board will be meeting and one of the items on their agenda is targets that relate to all the MPOs in the state. We will have staff at that meeting. Subject to your questions, uh, Madam Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for the Executive Director? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next, or do we have any member statements? No? Okay, we're moving on to the next agenda. Current Council of Governments. Roll call stays the same. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the Council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the Council. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non controversial by current COG staff and will be a approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. We have items A through E. Move approval. Second. Roll call vote. Ortiz? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Cantu? Aye. Maurer? Yes. Prout? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Wegman? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Madam Chair and Board Members. Um, many of you attended the March 1st uh, 
Kern Cog Regional Awards at Seven Oaks Country Club. Thank you for attending and thank you for the great job, uh, our MC, uh, Councilman Wegman and uh, Councilman Wood did. This was our largest ever regional awards. We had 240 attendees. Uh, congratulations to all the recipients, especially uh, Council Member Smith. Uh, it, w it was a great night. March 6th and 7th, um, I was in Sacramento for the Valley Voss meeting in Sacramento uh, with the other eight Valley Cogs and s many elected officials from the um, eight counties. We met with the new Caltrans director. We met with the new high-speed rail director, uh, Brian Kelly, who came from the Transportation Agency. We met with um, CTC executive director and um, the chairman of the CTC, Fran Inman, and several elected officials and, and other state agencies. It was a, a productive meeting. Uh, Kern, Kern Cog has two members on the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council. Council Member Wegman um, is one of them, and Council Member Pasquale was the other. Uh, wel welcome, Mayor uh, Vallejo, um, to the Kern Cog Board. But that brings up a vacancy, so I, I'd like you to all think about that. We'll come back with an item uh, next month. If any of you are interested, you can uh, talk to me or you can talk directly with. Uh, Councilmember Wegman about what those duties entail. Some of you may have previously, uh, like Mayor Cantu has previously served on that board. If you're interested, think about it. We'll come back with an item next month to appoint a, a second member to that board. Mr. Hakimi, through the chair, um, could you provide us the dates at that, uh, at that future meeting? The dates that they meet? That they would be meeting? The, have the they released that yet? The, the dates are usually not published in advance. If I rem remember, they usually make up their mind uh, a few weeks before they meet. Is that accurate? But okay. I'll, d I'll do my if, best. Yeah, if not, that's fine. All right, thank you. Uh, May 9th, 10th, and 11th is the annual San Joaquin Valley Policy Council that will be held in Modesto this year. If you're in interested in attending, please let me know. Um, I will be attending with at least one other uh, Kern Cox uh, staff member. Uh, one of the items inside your uh, folders tonight is the 2018-2019 Kern Cog Financial Plan um, working draft. It was, it's also posted on the website. It's, it was um, completed too late to make the agenda. I just wanted to bring your attention to that. You will see it at least two more times uh, before uh, it is ultimately approved. Uh, also, I wanted to remind everyone, and this is in the folder too, about the Taft Transit Center grand opening, March 22nd at 4 p.m. Um, uh, Council Member Cryer, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it. I'll be traveling back from Orange County, but I, I will do my best. And we will have a, at least one staff member there at that grand opening. Congratulations on completing that important project. <laughs> Just a, a couple more quick items. Uh, your Form 700 forms, your Form 700 Form 700s are due, and as a reminder, um, you most likely can use the same form that you file for your um, agency, un unless you have property or financial interests outside of your city. Uh, please consult with your uh, council or our council if you have questions about that. We do need original signatures on, on the ones that you submit to us, though. That is due at the end of the month. In your folders tonight is um, the Eastern Kern projects that Mr. Green mentioned, a flyer for the grand opening of the Taft Transit Center, timeline that covers the, the next five months, a schedule of cash disbursements for February, a press release from Assemblymember Salas's office honoring our own uh, Cheryl Wegman as Woman of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. A article from uh, the Midway Driller about the regional awards, and I've seen at least two other um, 
articles. I think I've seen one from Eastern Kern. The Mojave Desert News had an article, and I've s seen at least one more. Article f uh, from a local TV station about legislation to potentially turn over State Route 184 to the County of Kern. The draft of the financial plan that I mentioned previously and a report on alternative fuel and advanced technology vehicles. Subject to any of your questions, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Any questions for the Executive Director? Seeing none. I have a comment. Keep on doing your good job you're doing for giving us funding to the state and the federal government. We appreciate it. Thank you. Will do. Yes, Aaron, you do a wonderful job. We appreciate you. Okay. Every day. Yeah. I'm sure he does. <laughs> well, before we end tonight, we have an award for Peter Smith. Pete has been here for 30 years. Dedicated service to current Council of Governments. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Pete. Thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate your Thank service. You. Ma Madam Chair, th there's a cake uh, celebrating 30 years of service uh, for everyone to enjoy after the All meeting. All right. Cake. <laughs> We're going to have some cake. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs>